Welcome to Godzilla-thon in part two of my Godzilla 1984, a.k.a. Godzilla Returns, a.k.a. Godzilla 1985 review. What I have here is the official Kraken release, which I highly recommend. It's the original Japanese version with an English dub. And this is the Sumo Gorilla release, which is what I initially got before there was an official release. It was how I first seen the original Japanese version, and you even get a second disc which has the American version, Godzilla 1985 with Raymond Burr in it, and even though I think this version superior in every way, oops, sorry, had to pause for technical difficulties. As I was saying, even though I prefer this version, I gotta admit, I do miss Raymond Burr's presence in this one, because we're, unlike in Godzilla 1954, he was kind of shoehorned in, which he is too here. At least they shot new scenes around him, and you can see how haunted he is by the events of the first film. Now, before I get into the re full review, I just want to give a couple quick shout-outs to two other YouTubers I enjoy. First, Lethal One, I know you liked my original review of this. Hope you get a kick out of this one. And Token Dave, because I I know the original, well, the re-edit of 1985 was the, the Godzilla movie you said your uncle took you to see in the theaters. Hope you two enjoy this. Now... The plot centers around nothing spectacularly groundbreaking, but just something really well done. Godzilla appears during a typhoon. A reporter named Garo Maki, told you during my Son of Godzilla review we'd hear that name again, finds the ship. Everyone's been dead and drained of their blood. It's because of a giant sea louse. They were on Godzilla. After getting saved by the last survivor of the Yahata Maru, he meets the survivor, and we find out later this survivor works for a professor. Him and his sister are going to college, and he works as a fisherman during the summer, I take it, to support their education. The reporter, and again, great kind of character to put in a movie like this, because of the nature of their jobs, they uncover facts. He gets his story rejected, finds out it definitely is Godzilla, and gets sent to go talk to the professor. He meets the professor and meets the fisherman's sister and does something good and also just dirty because he more does it for the story. He tells her her sister... It's not right, your brother's still alive. And when she gets to the hospital, he has his cameraman there, and they take pictures. And when the story breaks, those are the pictures published. Yeah, smooth move, buddy. I like the character, but that's a jerk move if I ever seen one. And this is one nitpick I can give this version. He does it. And they're initially mad, but there's, like, no resolve. It's like they're mad at him, then they just sort of forgive him. Now, Godzilla destroys a Soviet submarine, and this escalates tensions between the U.S. and Soviet Union until a Japan the Japanese Prime Minister finds out that their anti-sub sonar net confirmed it was Godzilla, so he makes the news public to avert nuclear war in... Again, this film brings Godzilla back to his roots as the metaphor for the bomb, the metaphor for destruction. And to reference the past film again, the American re-edit again, I love the line where Raymond Burr said, we must approach him like we would a force of nature, and that's true. You don't combat Godzilla, you just get out of his way. And after... A few scenes, we have Godzilla show up at a nuclear power plant. In another point, I'll say where the American re-edit did a little better. 
the line is something like when Godzilla feeds on the grabs the reactor to feed on it. Godzilla is eating it for his supper or something like that. And the American re-edit, it's he's consuming all the radiation, and I think that sounds a little better. And not only do they point out that Godzilla was able to avoid the so R net, but he couldn't have been seen because of the fog. That may sound a little funny, but I spent a summer at a beach town. It was in a motel being put up through social services. And anyway, life story aside, there were time the fog was so thick, you literally could not see your hand three inches in front of your face. So, yeah, I believe Godzilla could avoid visual detection in dense fog because of the fog I've seen at the shore. Just throwing it out there. My favorite scene in this film involves the Prime Minister. There's a point where he has a conference with the U.S. and Soviet ambassadors, and it's actually my two favorite scenes back-to-back in this film, where they're pressuring him, we want to use nuclear weapons. If Godzilla appears on J- in Japan's mainland or in your waters, you need to let us use nuclear weapons. The Prime Minister has a meeting with his staff. They go over the ins and outs, up and downs, whatnot, and he comes back and he, after a point's brought up too that these mini nuclear weapons are hard to quantify and this may be a test run, so the Prime Minister stands firm, and I love this because the way the actor plays the Prime Minister, you feel all the pressure that's on him. He basically says, our nu- we have a firm nuclear policy. We do not make nukes. We don't allow them. We will not condone their use even in this situation. And the ambassadors on both sides get mad. In the U.S. one point up, this is no time to be discussing principles. And he tells them principles are at stake. And he says, you may be accusing us of acting out of pride. Perhaps that's true, but what of your attitudes? Who are you to say we must follow you? And I love the scene where the Soviet prime minister looks at one of the aides with him and the guy just tilts his head and goes like that, like, "Mm, he's got us there, boss. And he pretty much calls them out and tells them they're in the wrong, too. In the next scene, he goes back to his office and probably gets his one moment of rest for the day, and his aide lights a cigarette for him, and he asks him, what did you say to the American and Soviet leaders? He said, I asked him, if Godzilla were to appear in your country and attack Moscow and Washington, would you have the courage to use nuclear weapons, knowing how many of your own people would be killed? And he said, both leaders finally understood, and This is so true to the, again, so true to the spirit of what the original Godzilla was. This may be my all-time favorite. I'll admit the original is better, but when it came to picking my all-time favorite, it came down to which one do I think is better and which one do I enjoy more. I chose the one I enjoyed more. That's it for part B. This is going to go into a three-parter for these two films. My favorite Godzilla movie, of course it would. Don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe. Feel free to dislike and be on the lookout for part three. Over and out.